Hey, welcome to Picture Line, and uh, today we're going to be talking with uh, Bob from Black Magic Design. Bob is the director of sales operations for uh, Black Magic and for the Americas. So, uh, welcome and uh, and nice to meet you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Uh, happy to be here. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, uh, the Atom Mini. And am I saying that right? The the Atom. Yeah, A10 Mini. Um, now there's the A10. There's several A10 Minis, as you know. <laughs> yeah, we have. Uh, we have. Looks like we have three that we're. Uh, we'll be talking about. We'll, we kind of wanted to get started today on the A10 Mini and and maybe what that uh, what that does for us. Can you just kind of describe the product? Tell us what it does. Sure. So the A10 Mini is a four input HDMI switcher. So it's a live production switcher, but it also has um, a USB. C port that becomes a webcam. And what that does is it shakes hands with your computer and with software to say, hi, I'm a webcam, just like you have built in, except that you can plug four cameras into it and microphones and, and do a lot of things with it. But in terms of how it looks to Zoom or to Skype or any of these others, it just shakes hands like a webcam. And that really gives a lot of cool advantages to what you can do from home. Um, a perfect example is, this is a green screen, so I'm doing a chroma key with my A10 Mini. Oh, cool. So when I shake hands, it looks like a, a, a webcam, but ultimately I have a four input switcher with a chroma keyer and a downstream keyer and, and all that good stuff. Oh, wow, that's great. You know, that, and that looks really good, you know. I, I, I thought, boy, you have a really nice office back there. You must, you must be well read. <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually is a picture of the family room upstairs, but my wife has quarantined me down to the basement, so. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that looks great. It, it's uh, uh, tell me, who is this? Who is this product for? Um, you know, it's a it's a live streamer, but what is it? What is it for? Well, you know, originally when we launched it back in September 2019, pre-COVID days, uh, we we launched it with the idea for people that needed to use a switcher but didn't even really know what a switcher was, meaning that they wanted to be able to do live streams. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of gamers like to show their their gaming skills online, and this gave them a way to do picture in picture over over their gaming output. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the real choices. And then, of course, as it came out, there were people that knew what switchers were, and they wanted uh, to use it for all kinds of things. You know, just a small remote, that kind of thing. The good thing about this now it's at four HDMI inputs. Traditionally, HDMI cables don't run very long, but over time, there have been these new fiber optic HDMI cables that go 100 meters, so that's over 300 feet. Oh, so wow. that runs as long oh, as an SDI cable. So now you're really talking about being able to use this with everything. Wow. So, yeah, yeah so that was the start of it, and that's how we got going. Then came uh, our lockdown, and we accelerated the delivery of the A10 Mini Pro. So the Pro version has all the same features, looks very similar to the A10 Mini. It added two really big features. One was the ability to stream directly from the box. So the, so the, uh, the Ethernet connection on the back can, can do the encode, the, the, the product can do the encoding and stream out direct from there. Uh, for instance, in my house, I have it directly connected to my bandwidth so I don't even need a computer I could just hit the button and I'll, I start streaming oh wow and 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 it's as easy as this where I can just I uh, I come over here that's my camera and I can I can hit uh, on air so the on air buttons flashing on this which means I'm now streaming to my private Facebook page that no one else can see but me, which is good because nobody needs to see this. <laughs> but uh, it's just that easy. And same with the record, you can record too, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Yeah. So when the yeah. A10 Mini Pro came out, uh, we also introduced the ability to control the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and Pocket Cinema Camera 6K directly from the A10 software. And that was a game changer too, especially for me, because I'm down here in the basement by myself. I do use an A10, I mean, a, a, a pocket cinema camera 4K, uh -huh. and I was getting up and down a lot. And then once I got the software, I was able to do zoom and focus and whatnot 
on the software itself, which yeah. is a yeah. big help. So that's, um, I, can, I can do that. Like, so here I have the ATEM Mini software and this software applies to all ATEMs really. Uh, there's a lot of grayed out buttons because on the more advanced switchers, you have more buttons, right? But on this one, you have uh, the access to what you have. And then in the camera section, I can control up to four cameras and uh, do the camera shading of the cameras. And uh, I can do zoom and focus depending on, on the camera, uh, the lens that's on the camera, whether you have control over it. But, but you have all this control, which is amazing. And the same with the audio. The audio is we have... Uh, embedded audio into each input of the of the switcher. So if you like, for instance, the microphone I'm using is plugged into the um, into the camera, and then I bring that camera in on input one, and then I leave it on so that it's always on when I'm speaking. If I I have audio follow video, that's what AFV is. Some people think it's America's funniest videos, but that's not true. <laughs> uh, so when I go to the camera four, which I'm on now it would play audio if I had audio on this source, but only when I went to that source. So that's the difference between putting it on and putting it on audio follow video. Ah, so, great. Right, so it gives me a lot of flexibility because when I do a lot of these Zoom calls and I want to speak to people on camera, obviously, and then I wanna go either show them the software or I show them the hardware or I show them a, um, a PowerPoint or something like that, I have the flexibility, but at the end, to Zoom and to Skype and all the others, it just looks like I'm just feeding my webcam to you. Absolutely, it's like a, it, it's an entire uh, TV network in a little box, you know? <laughs> it, it is, and, and the thing that, that I think was the clever part of it, uh, traditionally, um, sometimes in companies that make switchers, they have different divisions that make the switchers, right? So the, the, the top tier ones, are created by one team and then the, the smaller ones might not be created by the same team and so there's different operational ways to use them sure. and that kind of can be confusing sometimes. But with Blackmagic, the software is the same no matter which one you get. You have access to more buttons as you go up. But what that does is the people that um, knew our ATEMs, our larger ones, could immediately use the software here. But also, the people that get used to using the ATEM Mini with this software can then move up to larger switchers as they get, uh, you know, as they either advance or they go to their church or wherever because the switchers seem to be everywhere now, especially now. Sure. So, so having that kind of crossover has been great. And so we've been able to introduce more features, but also keep all the traditional layout. So like the advanced chroma keyer that I'm using uh, is the same in the ATEM Mini a10 Mini Pro and the A10 Mini Pro ISO as it is in the uh, Constellation 8K switcher. So, you know, oh, those nice. features yeah. to move through. So, yeah. So that that really gives people a lot of, a lot of flexibility. And, um, and for this, normally I would use a still in the media player to play, uh, to use for my background. But because uh, you have... You know, I can only use the media player. There's only one media player in this. I can't. I couldn't do a downstream key at the same time if I was tying up the media player. But um, I have. You know, I still have my downstream key available because I'm just using one of the inputs to play that still from something else. I see. So yeah. there's yeah. definitely clever ways to to use all four inputs to get what you need depending on what you're doing. Um, so that that has been cool. And then of course. The, so the new ISO version of the ATEM has the cool idea that you can record um, ISOs. That's what ISO stands for. You know, so, so every input would be ISO recorded as well as the program output is going to be recorded. And then there's an XML file. So when you drop it into Resolve, you can drop in all the files into Resolve and then adjust your edits if you made any poor choices and want to cover something up. Right. And you can also use in the in the ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. You can put the cameras, the Blackmagic cameras, into record, and they'll record Blackmagic RAW. So you could go back and do the full, um, you know, uncompressed version of it. You know, the RAW files, uh, as opposed to the compression level that you're recording, because that's what you use to do the streaming. So there's a lot of uh, cool use cases there, and then simply just replace. The, the compressed files with the, the Blackmagic RAW files of the cameras, and you can put that back in. So it, it, it gives you a lot of cool flexibility, and I think that the uses of it will 
uh, people are discovering that they could start doing that because even if they say we live stream this, um, but we later say, well, we're going to put it also up there for people to watch it later. If there was a mistake or a glitch or something, if we did the recording, then we could go back and record, uh, or, you know, do an edit on it and then put it up fixed. Sure. Yeah, we can kind of have that. Uh, the, the possibilities just are, are enormous uh, as far as uh, the abilities to uh, all of the camera inputs, all the audio inputs. Uh, you know, and some of these might be kind of basic questions, but uh, can you have multiple people talking uh, and, and things like that and have that, you know, like a conversation going back and forth? Sure. And that, and that, that um, you can do that easily because each input can be brought up on the mixer at the same time. So um, if I go back to, uh, I have to TD myself here, uh, go back to... Um, mm -hmm to the, the audio menu, you'll see that I, each camera, or each input rather, uh, has uh, audio inputs, embedded audio into the switcher via the HDMI. Then there are two mic inputs that can be mic or line uh, that come in. So that's a total of six different sources that I can have, and I can turn them all on or off depending on what we need. So you can have this all. Now, the other thing you can do is if it's in a larger place where you can have um, a separate audio mixer, somebody could do that and then just feed the audio out into uh, these two inputs and then that could be your program output. But either way, you could have multiple people. And then of course, uh, on the other side of it, you, you can use the picture-in-picture -picture to be able to um, put two people up at the same time. Uh, and so uh, there, there's a lot of flexibility uh, from that standpoint. Um, generally, you're probably doing the one-on-one -on -one sort of thing yeah. like we are, but but you could, if you were a band and you had multiple cameras and you want to switch between the bands, but the mics are on each camera, you could bring all those up, and that way everybody could hear the the, the music without having to, you know, they could hear the whole mix out. Um, so there's different ways you could do that, and you know, even like a simple thing now where a lot of performers um, are trying to do you know, these sort of live streams, things like that. If they only had a two camera, um, you know, operation, they could, they could, you could pretty much switch with your foot and just put the, put the, you know, put it down by your foot and yeah. hit the cut button. It's really big. Yeah. The cut button is, is that big. So yeah. you could just put, you know, you could do that and, um, and switch between, you know, the close up and the wide shot or whatever it is that you have. So, I could just see the big uh, toe going for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, someday I'm going to make a video of me pressing the, the thing with my foot. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, there's also other little chicks people use. Some people use the Stream Deck. I don't know if you're familiar with those, uh -huh. but those are little programmable keypads that you can use that come in a variety of sizes, but they're not terribly expensive and they'll do multiple things at the same time uh, with an ATEM. So you could you know, it would switch cameras, take the key off, put another key on. You could do that like with one button. So that helps with people, uh, especially in like churches and schools and things where if you, um, you know, macros sometimes may be too complex for them, but you could re pre-build macros and use the little stream deck to be, all you have to do is hit this button, then this button, then this button. And, right. you know, because, right. you know, volunteers at any of these things are tough to get if people think it's going to be difficult and they don't want to embarrass themselves and whatnot. But to be able to just lay it out to, you know, labeling the buttons with, you know, whatever, the pastor, boom, you know, right. pastor at lectern, right. boom, you know, right. those kind of things, right. um, that makes it very easy for people to do. And, and with the new ability to stream directly out of, out of the box, which the thing about that is that the encoder built into the ATEM is, is superior to trying to do it in software with the computer because sometimes they, over, they get overtaxed, right? So this way you can just pump it through. There's also a new product coming very shortly uh, the ATEM streaming bridge, and that is for the other end. So you stream directly from an ATEM Mini Pro or Pro ISO directly to the streaming bridge box, which then turns it back into HDMI or SDI. And where you'd use that is if you were doing, um, well, for instance, if, if you guys were doing a multi-camera shoot, but you had me as a guest, I could stream directly to a streaming bridge, then you could bring that into your switcher as a source rather than trying to figure out how to put the computer up. And, and, and so there are ways to do that. It, that's really what could have helped a lot of uh, the TV networks and the, and the local guys that are, have their, you know, their people in their basement doing sports and weather and whatnot. If they had a 
better way to get a signal straight, you know, and turn it back into baseband for them. And that, that this is one of the, the things because ultimately it's not a high priced operation that we're talking about right. to buy a couple of these products and it would be worth it. Um, so with that, it would be able to stream maybe even to a, uh, a projector or something like that even. Well, right. So the streaming could it would turn it back into HDMI and SDI, so mm -hmm. you could actually do both at the same time. You could yeah. have it hit a projector and maybe a recorder, or back into another switcher or something. So you you have a lot of lot of use cases, and and it, they're designed to work together. They're they're a partner piece. They yeah. you know yeah. you need uh, both of them to do it, but uh, but it's a uh, it's a, a neat little package to maybe to sort of guarantee your your bandwidth and to be able to. Um, you know, keep it isolated too, if you don't want uh, people hacking into. Uh... Sure, yeah, for sure. Now let's go back to uh, uh, the cameras and inputs and things a little bit. Uh, uh, I have multiple cameras, they, 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 they're not the same, uh, and they may not even have the same uh, 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 rate of, yeah, frame rates and things like that. Will, will the Mini handle that? Yeah, so that that's kind of a, a cool thing uh, each of the four inputs has a built-in scaler, for lack of a better term. So you, whatever you put in, it will either match, uh, so either all cameras will match whatever input one is, or you can just select a, um, uh, a standard in the ATEM and it'll just convert everything to that. So okay. that's uh, really cool because um, you're, then you don't have to worry, because that was another thing that had to be part of the simplicity when we made the design was that we didn't expect the level of the customer to know that there were different frame rates like you know HD is HD and you know that kind of thing so right. this way it really helps people um, to be able to do that and that is has been a big deal because you can like for instance this setup that I have I have a pocket cinema camera 4k on me but my other camera that I'm using is a, um, a uh, what is it it's the micro studio camera well, the micro studio camera does is is different. You know, it's set up different than a pocket camera. I don't have full control over it per se, but I can k take the HDMI out. But they're they're probably running at different standards. But I don't know that because I don't care because I just plug them in and they just work. Right. It's a, yeah. That's the simplicity of the system. Is it just it just kind of works. Everything is uh, is so easy. The software is easy. The uh, the input everything is uh, is great. Uh, is there a is there a an output bandwidth that is necessary for it, or uh, what is the output that that uh, ATEM minis can can output? Right. So so there's um there's uh you can vary the the bit rate. Uh, you know there's a couple of different selections of of what you can do. Um, if you're going straight to an ATEM streaming bridge, then you can dial it up to the max because that would be easy because it's not very uh, bandwidth intensive. Uh, when you're using a service, so if you're streaming to a service, they usually will adjust your um, your bandwidth uh, right. for you, uh, which is you know their prerogative. So uh, generally, you just send them something right in the middle somewhere, so it's not overstressing their system, and and, and, and it'll work. So there are a couple of different variables on what you can um, what you can stream, but for the most part, you just kind of sit and forget. Now, there's also the ability to uh, stream directly, as I said, from the Pro and the and the and the Pro ISO. And um, let me take you back, and I'll show yeah. you uh, a little bit of that on the switcher itself. Oh, four. So um, in the output section, uh, there you can see that I have Facebook, uh, Twitch, and YouTube that I can select from. And then what you do is you put in your key, your stre streaming key, and then you select your quality. So there's a there's a few. So if I can go. The, we call them streaming and hyperdeck. The hyperdeck is just a delineation of a higher um, bit rate. So uh, at the high, it's 45 megabits per second, right? And then if I if I um, uh, you know hit on air, I, like I said, I'm now streaming to that Facebook page that nobody knows about, which is fine because right now they all they'd be seeing is this menu. Uh, but um, but yeah, so I can just do that straight away, or I can go like I said, so, select Twitch or YouTube or or whatever. And you're even able to uh, modify an HTML file, uh, so you could do that um, if you're XML file rather, if you're um, you know savvy enough. Uh, there's some tips online that people have posted on things and showing you how to do that, where you could um, actually do the uh, XML file and, and and have it stream to a different source. And of course, you know the streaming bridge for 
is is there to sort of you know they handshake to each other you send a file to the streaming bridge to say i'm sending this atem to you and it does the rest of the work for you because sure. uh, you know we're controlling both ends of that so that makes it a little easier so let's talk a little bit about the recording and, and things like that so the atem mini pro and the atem mini iso we have this ability to uh, uh to record that that uh, video output and we can we can uh, record each of the cameras separately well it depends on so on the pro what you can do is you can get the output uh, the program output um, out the USB-C when you're streaming via Ethernet and you could also initiate the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K or 6K into record to record locally in Blackmagic RAW I see. with that okay. model Okay. The A10 Mini okay. Pro ISO gives you the ability to put the the Blackmagic cameras into record locally in RAW with with additional drives, but also when you record it uh, attached to the USB C drive, uh, USB C port on the um, on the switcher itself, then you're getting the program file, each of the camera ISOs, any of your media players that are used, and um, and and you know and the program output obviously with the XML file to throw into Resolve and then you can put it all back together again and adjust edit. So it's uh, it's the pro on steroids when you right. move to the ISO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a very powerful tool for sure. Yeah, um, you know I I, I think uh, I think that's 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 amazing. This is a this is a great tool and uh, and I and I think that was a great explanation of uh, of 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 what we have. Uh, anything else that we need to know about this? Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. I, I, I think we have, like I said, I think we have covered a lot of it. Um, I will tell people this, because uh, it's always a tip that people should know. If you want to sound, sounding good is almost better than looking good yeah. on these things, because yeah. you can't hear people, right? So one of the tips I always tell people is to make yourself sound better. If you have any of these foam that they build, you know, mics, you know, you put oh, the right. easel around, oh, right. yeah. put some, put some, put some, um, hang a coat behind the camera that you're using, even if you're just using your, your laptop, anything to dampen sound, because otherwise you sound like you're in a cave. I mean, sometimes I listen on the radio and they're interviewing a guy who's a CEO of a tech company and he sounds like he's in a cavern somewhere because <laughs> yeah. they don't understand how to, how to lay towels down on their desk or hang coats. You know, if you're going to do a voiceover recording, if you go into your closet and do it there, it's really quiet because there's a lot of coats in there, yeah. a lot of, you know, a lot of yeah. fabric that absorbs sound, and that's what it does. So my tip to everybody is uh, if, if it's out of picture range, hang something, cloth, whatever, and make yourself sound better because if you sound better, you're going to look better automatically. <laughs> I think that's a great tip. That's a great, great non-ATEM uh, specific uh, tip. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's great. That's great, Bob. Thank you for uh, for taking some time and uh, and and talking with us today, and and uh, appreciate your your uh, your time that you've you've spent in here and, and helping us out with that. And, and uh, thanks, my pleasure. It's good to good to see you, and we'll talk to you soon. Stay safe, everyone. Bye bye.